Yeah, same Sex Love in India, A Literary History is the book that we two had ed co-edited, which came out in 2000. And the updated edition came from Penguin India in 2008. Uh, it's a collection of uh, texts from over 2000 years, uh, translated from about 15 languages. So we have extracts of the text and analysis of the text. So this uh, is everything from the Mahabharata, the Kama Sutra, the Purans, um, uh, the Kritvas Ramayan, so many, many texts, and then many, many um, uh, uh, poets like Mir Taki Mir, uh, etc. A lot Ab of poets. Uh, 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 Najmuddin Shah Mubarak Abru, um, uh, Jurrat, uh, Insha, Siraja Rangabadi, and then a lot of modern writers too, from many, many modern languages, Hindi, Rajasthani, Gujarati, Marathi, etc. Etc. Uh, so that's what the book is. In, in my section, the Sanskritic uh, texts, I had uh, talked about Hindu philosophy and um, the various schools of Hindu philosophy and uh, how uh, Hinduism approaches uh, desire in general or pleasure in general, uh, of which uh, same sex sexuality is just one dimension. And everything is a manifestation or an expression of the divine that is evolving in certain, uh, uh, in different directions. Mm. And uh, so, nothing in Hinduism, there is nothing that is outside of the divine. There really is. Isn't. Even demons are a dimension of the divine. In medieval India, we carried this forward, this idea, and um, what I tried to do was to show that, in spite of what the Sharia or the Quran is supposed to have said about it, um, the, the practicing Muslims, even Muslims who were considered saints or um, people who were, ven uh, uh, you know, ven Bias. venerated, and mm. uh, this thing were um, left. Ex ex enough evidence in writing of their love or attraction to another person of the same sex and that this didn't diminish or that this idea as a even as a metaphor in Urdu poetry continued even uh, writers who were not otherwise identified as being uh, uh, queer were using metaphors about um, male love and from male love so uh, the tradition we showed that it, it continued and in, in modern period it, all these traditions were reflected all together. Mm -hmm. And apart from so, uh, one one aspect I think of what we can call Indic culture broadly is it's inclusive, it's assimilative, it uh, doesn't really throw out anything. Includes mm -hmm. and the second aspect which Sri Rashi Sri Ravi Shankar had also mentioned is this notion in uh, Hindu thought that everyone is both male and female. The gods are all male, female, neuter. They all are. They take different forms, and that in each person there is the male and the female, which which at various times one is dominant at another time another is dominant. That sexuality and gender are fluid over a lifetime and uh, in the universe. To take away the fundamental rights of any citizen, the state has to prove that there is an overwhelming national or social interest which requires taking away the fundamental rights, like national security. So all the appellants in uh, the case uh, had uh, argued that uh, the social interest that is that homosexuality is against religion, culture, family, morality, etc. But the interesting thing is that the judgment nowhere states this. The judgment never says that it's against any of these things. It just says it's not unconstitutional, but gives no reason. So. Um, and you think that's a victory for that idea? <coughs> the unfortunate thing is that the appellants have taken that and the media has also taken that, that that was the reason. Though the judgment never stated it, most people haven't read the judgment and they just decided, yeah, it means it's against religion, culture, etc. I don't think we can see the Supreme Court judgment by itself. It's a part of a process, it's a small battle. For instance, if you see every comment, and I'm not talking about comments from uh, gay people mm. um, or queer people, but um, the press, the spokesman, they all are saying, but this is the examples of this, 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 this are there, this poet, that carving, that, this thing. Now, if you remember in, um, in the late 90s when we were talking, how many of these images were actually portrayed in this sense mm. on Facebook with you know, um, labels and uh, so, so much, much right. better informed. Right. What I see as a huge success of the book that these things have become a part of people's consciousness, yeah. that they automatically cite hmm. these things. Hmm. Because in our time, people were saying, achha, achha, hmm. this may be here, this may be here, you know. It's true, in the, before the 90s, I think everybody knew about Khajura, that uh, everything uh, is there uh, in Khajura, uh, but that's it. People didn't even know that was there in the Kama, Kama Sutra, Sutra, because yeah, the yeah. versions of Kama Sutra that are popularly available usually omit the chapter on male, male mm -hmm. uh, sex. But now people know, and people mm -hmm. are quoting all kinds of mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that, uh, as, you say, as you said, mm -hmm. are in same-sex love and 
Rekhti has been mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bhagirath mm-hmm. story, Bhagirath yeah, being yeah. born to two women has been mentioned. Mm-hmm. Meer Taki, Meer mm-hmm. has been mentioned. Mm-hmm. Just in popular press. So that means it's, it's percolated in these... Uh, it's become a part of people's... Uh, last decade. Uh, uh, into and people's uh, knowledge. On the question of being Western too, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have uh, thought about it now and are aware that mm-hmm. if, the, if it was the judgment said, mm-hmm. Indian, the Indian mm-hmm. legislature has kind of passed this act, which is not true, of course. Mm-hmm. It was passed by the English Legislative Council in 1860. So clearly, it was the law that came from the West and not homosexuality from the West. Uh, in, uh, and Macaulay, who wanted to create a bunch of Indians who were Indian in mm-hmm. color mm-hmm. and appearance, but mm-hmm. were English, he said, and British in, t- in tastes mm-hmm. and opinions mm-hmm. and so on. Uh, the law is an example of that because uh, the but an unfortunate thing is that the Indians who support the law um, are sort of British in tastes and opinions, but not British right now in tastes and opinions. They're British of 1860 in tastes and opinions mm-hmm. in thinking that uh, all forms of uh, sex that are not penile vaginal must be horrible and uh, so on. So they are sort of stuck in a time warp. Whereas England has moved on, or so, so many other countries have moved on. So, and I think the point is also getting mm-hmm. across in terms of religion that there is a, there is a de- worldwide debate within every religion. Mm-hmm. It's not as if re- or any religion is 100% anti-homosexuality or for homosexuality. There's a debate in every religion. Um, but I think the point is getting across that it doesn't matter. You can have whatever religious beliefs you like, whether for or against or whatever. The point is it's uh, the constitution we have to follow and not any religion. You're free to hold your religious opinions. You're free to think it's a sin or whatever or to support it. But we have to go by the constitution and the individual rights of every citizen. We don't have, religion is not relevant. You know what we couldn't, we, would try, we tried to do um, in the High Court uh, by showing how stupid the law was. I, just, I think the Supreme Court, by re-emphasizing that law, has opened up the debate and lots more people are realizing how ridiculous that law is. So, um, hmm. uh, it's, in a way, it's all, I mean, I don't think this is 20 step backwards, you know, one step forward. I think there's a lot of little steps ahead, or at least they're showing that we've reached mm-hmm. this far.